Hey everyone, this is Matthew Kemp. Welcome to the Theology on the Ground YouTube channel. This is the third, or I guess fourth maybe, in uh, four videos this week that all happened to be about money. It wasn't originally planned that way, but then I started to notice a theme, and so it kind of became Money Week here at Theology on the Ground. Uh, this one's a slightly different take. This one is uh, a theology of receiving. So, you know, on the blog and on the YouTube channel in the past, I've talked a lot about generosity because generosity is a hallmark Christian virtue and, you know, God is the greatest giver and we're growing in conformity to the image of Christ and so that involves becoming more generous and, you know, a lot of stuff about why we should do that and even how to do that. I wrote a post about three practical steps to do that. Um, but then there's this other piece, you know, receiving. And, and yesterday, um, or two days ago, we, we tackled the phrase of Jesus, it's more blessed to give than to receive. So we were right in, you know, making sure we emphasize generosity because, um, you know, Jesus does there, but he doesn't say it's blessed to give and not to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive, but when you start thinking about this idea of receiving, being the recipient, uh, it actually has a pretty substantial biblical basis. And just starting from the fact that God is the creator and we are the creation, um, you know, everything we have is a gift. Everything that we have, we need to receive. Uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 7, Paul asks, you know, what do you have that you did not receive? And the expected answer is nothing. Uh, everything's a gift from God. So part of being human is just this fundamental um, need for God to provide this fundamental reliance upon God. And so uh, really receiving starts as sort of a fundamental act um, of being human. And I think that's where we need to start when we think about the area of, of receiving. Uh, but the other area I wanted to, to talk about today is just the, um, the aspect of another way that's sort of surprising that receiving is related to generosity. It's not that surprising, it's actually kind of obvious, but we're so self-centered that we probably don't normally think about it. But any time that you are in a position of receiving something from somebody else, you're letting them practice generosity. And so I still remember the time where I most clearly saw this in my own life was um, about 10 years ago, actually. I was 19 years old, and I was in Colorado one summer. So I went up there uh, for a summer job and a, a summer sort of church leadership program. And... Uh, Went up there with a group of friends from my church, and I think, I can't remember, there was about 10 of us or so. Super excited, we took this, you know, long road trip. Um, we were just all, you know, so fired up, so stoked uh, to be having this summer adventure, to be going to a beautiful place like the, the Rocky Mountains. And um, the first night that we were there, we went caving, right? There's a, a cave, I think it's called Old Man Mountain. I don't remember what it's called. But there, there's essentially three what they call problems, right? In other words, it's uh, four maybe. You, you get up to this cave, which we couldn't find the cave. We had to drive around and we had to hike around to find it. And um, you get into the cave and I think the first problem is that it's just this really narrow area that you've got to get through. So you kind of kind of put your back against the wall and you got to shimmy through. Um, and then there's like a ledge that you have to sort of walk across. and. You know, then there's like a, a little area you got to climb up and then a little area you got to slide down and then you, you come out the other end of the cave. So it's kind of a, you know, it's a physically involved thing. And, you know, we got there later than we expected and we, you know, exerted a lot of energy. And then it was, it was you know, dark by the time we were leaving, I think. <clears throat> so the group unanimously made a decision to stop in town and to get some ice cream. Who doesn't love ice cream? I love ice cream. My wife loves ice cream. Oh my gosh. Loves ice cream. I love ice cream too, though. Now, the, the financial state that I was in the mo at the moment was that, you know, I had just a tiny bit of money in my bank account um, from my leftover financial aid from the semester of college I had just done. And um, I was gonna be getting paid Colorado minimum wage, which was like $8 an hour, uh, minus my room and board, right? So I'm working at the YMCA of the Rockies as a day camp counselor and I'm living at the YMCA of the Rockies and eating meals at the, the mess hall at the YMCA of the Rockies. So they, they take that room and board out of my wage and my real wage was something like two or three dollars an hour, not anything to write home about. Wasn't doing it for the money. And in fact, all the money 
um, was going towards this leadership program, church leadership program, that I should have already paid for, but didn't. I was gonna use the money that I made, and so I actually had a collections guy from the program keep hassling me all summer, like, hey, you're behind on your payments. I said, I know, just wait till I get paid. Uh, so we're going out for ice cream, and I know, hey, I probably shouldn't be spending this kind of money on ice cream right now, which is, I think it was a good decision. Uh, but then what happens, everybody else besides me gets ice cream. And uh, my friend Danica, she says, hey, um, I'd like to buy you some ice cream. And, you know, I'm like, no, 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 I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't actually even want ice cream. She's like, no, I, I want to I wanna buy some ice cream. Seriously, you want ice cream. I mean, don't, don't be like that. And I'm like, no, I, I, I really don't want ice cream. And I think, and I might be exaggerating for dramatic effect, and it's been a long time since this happened. I think right after the interaction, like, my stomach gave a loud grumble. I was, I was betrayed by my own bodily functions. Um, but I mean, I did want ice cream. It was a lie. I should not have lied. And, you know, for a while, I only thought about it in terms of my own, how it affected me, right? I was wrong to lie. I was wrong to be prideful in that situation. But really, you know, the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. The second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. And I really was not loving my neighbor there. If I were thinking about Danica, if I were thinking about um, what was best for her, I would know that it's a great and wonderful thing to let her practice generosity, to let her grow in Christ's likeness in that respect. And in saying no, uh, I denied her that opportunity, all for my own sense of, you know, self-reliance or pride or, you know, whatever it was at the time. So, anyways, I think in this area of receiving you know, number one, that's part of what it means to be human. Number two, it allows others to, to grow um, in conformity to Christ, which is what we're all after. I think the third piece that just we all need to, to tackle is just getting the order right. Um, so, you know, generosity is ultimately the piece that we're working towards, but in some areas you need to start with receiving. Uh, and so obviously the, the main thing here is the most essential thing that you receive in your life is the forgiveness offered by God, is the gospel message, right? That you sinned against God, that you deserve the wrath of God, punishment, damnation, condemnation. Jesus died in your place for your sins, rose again on the third day, conquering your enemies of Satan, sin, and death, and that if you put your trust in him to save you, that you're gonna have eternal life. The Bible calls that a gift, right? The famous verse is Ephesians 2, 8, 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one can boast. It's the gift. You know, we've been justified freely as a gift, it says in Romans 3. So this idea is everything starts with receiving. You need to receive the kindness, love, mercy, and forgiveness of God. And then as you receive and are filled up um, emotionally, spiritually, then you should be generous um, with others. And so uh, everything starts with receiving uh, and then it moves on to, to giving. So yes and amen to the assertion that God wants you to become a generous person, uh, but you should also remember that it's his will for you to humbly, joyfully, gladly receive the kindness of himself and of others and uh, the world just becomes a more beautiful place as we all start doing that so hopefully you enjoyed this video that's the end of our sort of money series looking forward to talking to you guys next week we'll start a series on family which i think is going to be super exciting till then blessings <laughs>